Welcome to the Cyber Kuranku podcast. Uh, so, welcome to the podcast. Uh, my guest today is an uh, anti caste activist, student, writer, and an Indian anarchist from Kerala, uh, Pranav Jeevan P. That's your name, right? Yeah. Uh, so, what attracted you to anarchism? Like, why anarchism? Okay. So, initially, uh, like when we grow up, like we encounter different kinds of hierarchies, right? Ah, In sure. society. like we see patriarchy in action uh, you see casteism like brahmanism in action uh, then you see like different kinds of oppression that people face like there is income inequality and uh, you understand that the society is divided on a lot of different hierarchies and when you analyze it you, you can come to realize that every hierarchy is like uh, connected uh, with each other in a very powerful or very deep rooted way and you can't fight uh, a single hierarchy on its own like you you can just work on uh, patriarchy but then uh, when you go deeper into it you know understand that without intersectionality with other hierarchies you cannot approach patriarchy or you cannot uh, fight patriarchy so uh, the understanding that there are simultaneously multiple hierarchies that are uh, oppressing uh, people and the root cause of all hierarchies is an imbalance of power so like in every hierarchy there is a power difference so whether it is like man and uh, woman or like different genders it is like uh, the supremacy of uh, one particular gender over the other if you go for caste it is like about one caste over the other uh, if you look at uh, workplace there is an imbalance of power between the boss and the employee if you look at school there is an imbalance of power between the teacher and the students so even in families there is an imbalance of power between the parents and the kids whenever there's an imbalance of power the, there is a possibility of abuse of power and that abuse of power uh, automatically like generates that in egalitarian society that uh, we live in currently and anarchism as a concept is a rejection of all the hierarchies which are coercive which are like literally uh, forcing a human being to do something which they are not volunteering to do and Uh, all, all, all these institutionalist hierarchies it is not just like just one person trying to oppress another person it is this the hierarchies are being institutionalized by structures such as the state uh, or like uh, the business uh, or like 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 capitalism for example and uh, anarchism tries to understand and analyze and reject these social structures which are present which enables this oppression this coercive of hierarchies so when i started like understanding about patriarchy and then caste and then subsequent hierarchies i came to a realization that okay uh, with with just attacking one or just uh, reading about one particular theory and uh, working on it uh, i needed a ideology which i simultaneously questions the power and anarchism was that uh, ideology which has been existing for like last 200 years or so which no one actually talks about much and it was perfect for uh, this kind of a collective attack against every hierarchy uh, so basically what i'm understanding is like anarchism attacks so all, all unjust hierarchies am i right yeah how did you like how do who was the first uh, anarchist uh, author you read or like how, how did you actually come into contact with anarchism like because it's like a very uh, obscure right in especially yeah. in india because there are no anarchist organizations Uh, to my knowledge and there are no anarchist i mean uh, are there any anarchist uh, indian anarchist thinkers okay so when we look at the history of anarchism in india uh, so this is one thing that uh, people don't realize it uh, most people have a tendency to be anarchist without actually knowing it because anarchism the ideals of anarchism uh, anarchism is in like a party ideology kind of a thing anarchism is something which that you live by uh, when, when someone understands that they are being oppressed by a hierarchy and they know what authoritarianism means and they want to take charge of their life themselves they want to live in a democratic society and they push for it they are automatically being anarchist themselves and this kind of organization or anarchist organization is apparent in almost all the what you say people's uh, like struggles like when you look at the farmer struggle or the caa protest there are elements of anarchism in all those they, they are all leaderless they are all decentralized you can identify a particular group of people who are leading it because a lot of people came together 
right that even in the farmer protest there is no single leader that you can mm-hmm. identify it's like people collectively coming together knowing that they have to stand together and cooperate with each other to fight for their lives and uh, their uh, what you say their livelihoods so these are all actually anarchist ideals which people are ex- expressing the, just that they don't know it and uh, when we talk about actual anarchist theory in india uh, india doesn't have in yet had a proper anarchist uh, what to say organizing uh in in the actual official name of anarchism because like there were anarchists like hardayal and uh, acharya but most of their work happened outside india like hardayal and acharya they were actually organizing in europe and us at the time of uh, indian freedom struggle and even bhagat singh actually wrote articles on anarchism even though he was a marxist he was attracted to the uh, ideology of anarchism and how it was uh, like empowering people so there's a difference between like an so even though marxism and anarchism uh, at, at least as an objective has similar objectives the way they uh, look at it or how to approach it it's kind of different like uh, marxism is like a top down authoritarian approach like we will capture power and then we will force these things uh, but anarchism is more like a uh, bottom up approach in which uh, we want people to emancipate themselves it's not like we will tell people what to do and how to do it we want democracy to automatically enable people to like uh, realize their rights and stand up for themselves then why is anarchism feared by the public like uh, when you say anarchism to a common person uh, it has a negative connotation right why is it yeah. so so why that, do you think it yeah so that came uh, along <laughs> actually with the name the way the word anarchy has been used so the word actually means no king archy actually means king and anarchy means without king like it basically says that no ruler will rule the people that's what the word actually means but the issue is it has been it has been so normalized to think that the society will just crumble if we are not coerced by a single ruler or like if there is no law people will start killing each other it has been normalized to understand that people will just attack each other and won't cooperate if there are no coercive laws to uh, like punish them so it is this particular understanding that made people to like make the word anarchy synonymous with the word chaos and disorder whereas actually the anarchist society anarchist social organization is one of the most organized like most less chaotic forms of organizing so for example i can tell you like we have seen the farmers protest right recently the farmers protest doesn't have a what you say a state supporting them like it, within the organization it is voluntary participation of people helping each other so why do people help each other it's not like they have penal mechanisms inside right like they are not telling like if you do this like i will throw you to jail within the system because they are not they don't have a state supporting them but still people are helping each other they are uh, giving food they are uh, like having medical clinics and everything how is that happening so people normally have this uh, what you say this ability to organize and cooperate with each other because humans are fundamentally social animals and we can't live alone just by ourselves we are dependent on others for our survival and anarchism doesn't believe okay uh, when i am saying this anarchism doesn't believe that people are inherently goody goody or like there are good people and bad people we completely like neg- negate that uh, assumptions and we tell that there are mul- like the f- human nature is very complex and we believe that like there can be social order order in which people can be encouraged to cooperate and participate rather than actually forcing them or like like threatening them with uh, let us say jail or punishment they will cooperate when they understand that uh, that is in, in their own well being to cooperate actually so in such a system there wouldn't be any police or military or prison system right uh depends on how we see it so anarchists actually reject the idea of a, a standing police or a, uh, or a penal system uh, we believe more in the we reject the idea of this carceral state so uh, like when you assign a particular group of people as police you are actually giving them authority to actually brutalize people so uh, that anarchists reject like you cannot assign one or give power to one particular people because anarchism basically uh, is about decentralizing power and distributing power equally among people but 
in an anarchic society of course like there can be people who can do like uh, crimes that that is like that's human nature to have like uh, someone can assault someone else so but anarchist doesn't like just because someone assault someone anarchist the first response will not, never be throw this person in jail no anarchist will try to understand like is there an institutional structure which actually enabled that person to attack the other person like for example uh, we have uh, like uh, employers sexually harassing the their employees right because of that inherent power structure they are immune to repercussions so anarchist try to dismantle that power structure so that such a power equation never arises that the oppressor can exert power on the other and also uh, if someone is actually assaulting someone uh, or like uh, doing some crimes the, the response will mostly be reformative kind like uh, addressing whether like the person is act- why the person actually did it are they suffering from abuse are they do they have a mental uh, issue uh, they will be sent for counseling like the the like limiting or restricting that that person or throwing that person away from society might be considered only as the last resort not the first go to move as we see today and also when uh, anarchist are like want to like restrict a person they even if they uh, want to do that they will never create a fixed police so that like one person have is assigned that power it will be more like a rotation kind of a thing in which everyone uh, shares that power equally uh, what if there is a, like a disagreement in the society like uh, there will always be people like you know the right wingers and left wingers right uh, they won't agree with this system right so uh, like so, so anarchists have this idea that like why does uh, like like why do this ideologies exist and so um, in an anarchic society how conflict is resolved is like in a completely democratic uh, way uh, in which so how do i give an example so let us say uh, we have a uh, okay anarchism actually focuses more on local uh, governance like uh, they want the people who or more most of the decision making to happen at the local level Uh, so that is why anarchism is like uh, considered as like something which rejects state power anarchism doesn't actually reject state what anarchism does is it rejects the coercive state or centralized state anarchism wants the power to be distributed so that it reaches the people where they are living actually so uh, we anarchists believe that most of the decision making uh, that about governance or uh, economy or everything should happen uh, within the village or city or like wherever the local government is and very few decisions should actually go on uh, let, let us say in a federated structure and within the society or within this local community in which decisions are being made it will be like like maybe like 100 or 200 people coming together and deciding most of the decisions on how they should live for themselves so under such a situation uh, the conflict resolution is much easier it is not like we are electing a bunch of people to a parliament and then let the people like fight it out and another thing when most of the differences in ideologies exist today because there is a huge inequality in the society itself but in an anarchist society the property will be like completely like commune like it will be communes and uh, most of the technology or property will be democratized so so there is a complete abolition of private property in such a sense so so that like everything that is being produced will be for the common good and uh, since the society is more, much more egalitarian uh, there is an incentive for people to actually what you say like like fight against each other for the resources because most of the what is the basically the right wing ideology is because like some there are hierarchies which are already existing in society and somehow they want to justify those hierarchies so but in a society in which there are no hierarchies present there is no question of justifying it right uh oh, sure uh, how about i mean like uh, in indian society we are already born into a like a hierarchy right the caste system yeah. so how will uh, what will your solution to that will be like Yeah, my belief is that uh, because there is a state and they are providing like uh, many social like uh, reservation to the oppressed communities uh, it's helping them right so yeah, if a course. state doesn't exist then how will these communities will be rise yeah so uh, so your question is more on how to reach an anarchist society 
from what we are today and frankly there isn't a clear answer for that like there are multiple uh, directives or multiple views in anarchism in which which each takes a different turn but mo- almost every view uh, actually uh, what you say uh, agree on one particular thing different societies uh, have to like decide for themselves what kind of society that they want to live in you cannot have a one system for all kind of a solution uh, so how to like eradicate caste so right now the problem with caste is like there is so much cultural social and economic capital that has been uh, resting in the hands of few uh, what you say savarnas and most of the like dalit bahujan adivasis are completely uh, devoid of this capital so which restricts their social economic and political mobility anarchism instead of looking at the state to give them uh, uh, benefits like reservation actually focuses on building the community from the bottom up like uh, so most most of what the state does uh, is basically within the ambit of let us say a small politi- so what is the political representation uh, that the state is providing it's like like what is democracy to us because that is a much more fundamental question which has to be addressed uh so for indians democracy means the like going and voting once in 5 years that is what we call as festival of democracy but anarchist doesn't think that that is how a democracy should work like uh people can, should not delegate the the job of uh, policy decisions to a group of people and then forget about it people have to participate so anarchism actually tries to build uh, structures such so that the 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 the, the habit of democracy of decision making or self empowerment generates in people themselves so for example uh, the, like like there is this uh, anarchist society which have which was existing in spain uh, from i think somewhere around 1830s to 1930 like uh, for like around 50 to 60 years before uh, the like the civil war in spain happened so what uh, was what happening there was little by little uh, like the communities were strengthened like they were becoming more independent like they were collectivizing uh, the resources and started community farming uh, community schools community agriculture they even uh, opposed like the institutions many institutions which are considered normal like they rejected marriage rejected religion so uh, little by little so this is a bottom up thing in which there is no law from the top that is trying to like uh, impose some certain policies on people okay so we have a village which are which, which is like full of uh, people from the lower classes what we will do is we will start uh, like we will start a community within the village so that everyone can co- come together and start like let us say community farming a community school in which uh, they can be educated in a much better way than what the state wants them to be educated in uh they will have complete decision decision making power on all the decisions inside that village so little by little once people come to realize what democracy feels like they will start to question all the hierarchies that they are actually suffering not just caste not just patriarchy like literally every single hierarchy uh, another way is worker co- cooperative so if you know in kerala there is this thing called kudumbasri Uh, similarly in spain there is there was this, there is this huge uh, organization called mondragon corporation so these are worker collectives in which uh, every worker comes together and they own the firm collectively so there is no one boss who is like sitting on top uh, who has the entire capital and the others are working for him no uh, every employee is a member is 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 uh, an owner of the firm and all the profit are equally distributed so encouraging building of such firms such collectives such cooperatives uh, will automatically instill the ideology of democracy democratic decision making conflict resolution and enable people to question the hierarchies that they live in so once sufficiently such structures are being developed in the community level then automatically the need for depending on the state to actually enforce these policies for like empowerment of community it doesn't ex- there is no need for it the, they can empower themselves on their own they just have to be like what you say organized in that way 
and that is actually one of the fundamental difference between marxists and anarchists marxists believe that uh, only if we capture state power and force laws on people will pe- the society change but that is not how society works right whenever uh, you have uh, you you actually rest your hope on a leader leader or a group of people as leaders they le- almost always disappoint you of course there can be leaders who are like really benevolent and stuff but uh, the the idea of democracy is not there it's basically like you are re- the hierarchy stays exactly as it is and you hope that someone good might come and do good things that is not a sustainable procedure the only when people realize what they want and they find their voice can there be a revolutionary change in the way that we live in and that is what anarchism hopes for so if you were to reform society how would you how would it be different than it is now like what are like actionable steps uh, you could take hypothetically so one one is what i told like about oh, worker okay. cooperatives uh-huh. so like encourage more and more worker cooperatives like instead of uh, funding people to for startups and stuff like give the funding for building let us say community farms so that see once community farms so w- w- one another thing that people forget about anarchism is that the idea of democratizing democratize democratizing technology so uh, now now you know that like uh, in especially in us or the western countries the percentage of people who are actually employed in agriculture is like less than 1 or 2% uh, and they that is enough to actually produce enough food even for the, those countries and exporting which means that we all already have the technology and the resources to feed the entire population in the world and not many people have to put effort on it which means that the the problem right now is not that we don't have the the technology the problem is the technology rests with a few people the the knowledge or technology when it rests with a few people and they don't share it with the rest of the world everyone has to engage in manual labor for sustaining themselves so like why do manual scavengers have to go into drains when there are systems which can clean it because the technology is with a few people and they they won't release it because capitalism of course so to one of the principles of anarchism is that once the technology is democratized and everyone gets to use the technology the amount of work that a person has to do for the community for the entire community's well being and for their own well being will be like very few a very small percentage compared to the amount of work that we have to do today and on top of that most of the work that we do isn't actually in a way helping the community right most of the work that we do uh, like david graeber an anarchist told is that it's like bullshit jobs which doesn't add value to the society so once this uh, like the way society imagines what work means that that will completely change when uh, you have a community and you start a community farm for feeding the entire population and you start using machinery which is democratized like the knowledge the amount of work that you have to do for the community for generating food will be reduced so for example instead of working on a particular job you just have to work like 5 or 6 hours a week and the rest of the time will be free which every individual can uh, like uh, used to for their intellectual and creative pursuits which they can't do right now so one of the reasons why we have to delegate politicians or representatives for uh, dis- developing policies for us is because we don't have time for it right everyone is has to work from like morning to night and they don't have time to uh, put effort or or like energy into thinking about what policies should govern them that is why the need for delegating it to politicians arises but in an anarchic society because of this uh, democratization of technology and the reduction of manual labor needed like the time will be freed so that people can actually constructively input uh, measures and participate in the democratic decision making and their own creative pursuits whatever it may be also uh, when anarchism uh as so in excess in a society or like is implemented in a society or the way anarchist thinking generates every institution of power will be questioned like marriage like family is this 
can there exist a non coercive form of uh, schooling in which like the teacher doesn't have this much power in which the students are more centered uh, can there be a different kind of a medical system in which like instead of a few doctors we can have more people with more medical knowledge like uh, also like um, uh, worker cooperatives so the entire idea in which we visualize how institutions work will have to change and this is not a new concept because there are uh, communities with their functioning within the world which are actually running on anarchist principles for example the most unlikely place so we know syria right syria is like uh, being surrounded by uh, like has been in news for like lot of years and they are being attacked by the west the isis turkey everyone but inside syria there is this place called rojava which is functioning in anarchist principles because like they the the only way they could survive the onslaught of all these attacks was to cooperate among themselves and build something that is like almost completely democratic so they call it democratic confederalism uh, in and they have this federated communes and they have developed uh, community farming community schools in which there is a decentralization of power they have this government in which there are no they are not elected representative representatives but elected spokesperson so and that is a difference between parliamentary representative democracy and a participatory democracy uh, which anarchism pushes for so in an elected democracy or a representative democracy we elect a representative and they have complete power to do whatever they want and people can't call them back but in a participatory democracy the representatives are just spokespersons and uh, so let us say I, i i i am living in a town right and the town has a county city council in which everyone takes the decision making now if there are decisions which has which cannot be taken in just one town and which has to be decided by a collective of multiple towns uh, what the town can do is they can send a representative or a spokesperson basically to the uh, meeting of the or all the towns and you we can allocate what are the things that you should tell in that bigger meeting for, um, to the spokesperson and they should tell this exactly this and they can be recalled if they don't do what is asked them to do and this position will be rotated so there is no one person who is representing the entire community always it's like everyone gets a chance and they can be recalled so like the structures in place are uh, designed so that no one person or group of people will ever have a monopoly of in power or governing and that is how decentralization is achieved and this happens even today like in rojava and there is i think a place in mexico called chiapas uh, where there is a uh, decentralized functioning of government and such communes exist all over the place and uh, uh, to be fair if we re- remember the farmers protest uh, in the farmers protest Uh, we have the the kisan uh, morcha which is like the umbrella organization of this 400 unions the government in the talks with the government they actually sent spokesperson they didn't send representatives actually because they pre decided what should be talk, like communicated to the government by these 14 or 15 representatives and after talking with the government the representative had to come back and decide collectively first on what the government said and then make a decision the representatives couldn't make a decision by themselves on their own when they were talking to the government and that is how decentralization works and when we look at it carefully we can find this decentralization like everywhere in the society like even when we look at the indian villages like in which like when we see this uh, united oppression happening uh, against not, not united oppression united resistance happening against oppression uh, most of such Uh, organizing happens in a decentralized and artist way people just don't realize it so there is a natural tendency t- tendency to uh, form uh, like anarchist organizations and uh, and follow anarchist ideals uh, just that people are not sensitized about it so do you actually like do you believe in voting do you vote because of uh, okay yeah oh. so i can understand the con- conflict so the thing is that uh, this is not something anarchist uh, society is not something that can be constructed in like let us say uh, uh, like in, in in like in one day or 10 day like what one year or 10 years 
i like i told you it cannot be imposed on people people have to practice it and uh, like what take charge and that has to come through community building which is a very long drawn out process like people have to so we have to change the way the we teach our kids like how to like have conflict resolution mechanism how to like address issues how to look at hierarchies and this takes a long time and of course like so so even though i, I am an anarchist i basically work uh, most of my anti caste work is actually in uh, ensuring higher representation of uh, dalit bahujan adivasis in uh, iits and uh, other in institutions and i fight for reservations so it doesn't mean that like these are two separate things so every attack against a hierarchy is an anarchist uh, what you say anarchist ideal or, an, or like is that is that we are being anarchist when we question every single hierarchy and that uh, what you say that habit of questioning hierarchies has to come in people so see everyone can have different ways in which they attack hierarchies uh so some people might say that okay uh, so so one of the po- most uh, difficult prob- things in people is that everyone sees the hierarchy that they are oppressed by but they fail to see the hierarchy that gives them privilege so this is the most difficult uh, issue uh, that i have seen so for example like we have seen a uh, feminist who come from a savarna background they like complete they com- talk a lot about patriarchy but completely disregard caste because they they suffer patriarchy so they understand how it works but they don't they are privileged by caste so they don't see that similarly uh, we see with like uh, dalit bahujan men uh, they they can understand caste but they have uh, pro- issues with understand or seeing patriarchy as such and so what more i uh, like how i see it is like always like look for people who are uh, oppressed by multiple hierarchies and start with them like uh because they understand see even i don't understand uh, all the hierarchies very well i am limited by my own experiences but i try to understand it uh, through like reading and other ways and this translation of uh, the understanding of a hierarchy which you are oppressed by and the translation of that understanding to another hierarchy which grants you privilege that is one of the uh, biggest steps in uh, being an anarchist and once people learn to do that like understanding the hierarchies that are oppressing them and translate that experience in other to other hierarchies then it will be very fast process because then people will see hierarchies everywhere like they will see it in schools they will see it in their own organizations uh, in families in their workplaces even in the government offices and that that is the first step so once we understand that we are being oppressed in multiple hierarchies and multiple dimensions people will start finding their voice okay so do you believe that the public perception of anarchism can be changed uh yeah one of the ways that is is being tried to change is that uh, like we use different terms uh, like uh, libertarian socialism so uh, marxism is considered as authoritarian socialism so anarchism is called libertarian socialism where we value individual liberty so so like different terms are being used and anarchists actually don't care much about the term like people can like uh, throw away the term they can use whatever word they look for it we prefer that people follow the ideals of like let us say mutual aid uh, decentralization of power and like uh, cooperation um, and participatory democracy so and voluntary participation so once all these ideals are in place doesn't matter what they call it like like for example uh, if you remember the shaheen bag protest the shaheen bag protest is like an amazing uh, like assertion by a group of uh, society which was considered as like uneducated or not uh, assertive right like it was completely uh, like uh, like it was completely dominated by muslim women and they they decided what they wanted to do and they did it they occupied a spot and such occupational protest like there was tenden- there's a tendency for like let us say political parties or a couple of individuals to claim leadership right whenever a protest happens in india this is what is mostly what we see and even for shaheen bag at some t- point there were like some men who came and told that like maybe the protest should be called off but the women stood their ground and you can't find a single leader for shaheen bag shaheen bag protest 
so that is decentralization and that is that there is democracy like they decide what what they have to do by collective decision making process so that's what i'm telling like whether people like the word or not people are understanding the need for these ideals these anarchist ideals and uh, like the anti ca protest uh, shaheen bag uh, the farmers protest and multiple other uh, struggles social struggles that are happening all over india and all over the world we can see the immense of anarchism and i think that's a very positive uh, approach and people also are realizing that like when people collectively come out and uh, like assert their rights in a democratic way which is it is much more powerful than any centralized protest that is organized by a single political party or a single organization It's because like india has india has never seen protest of this magnitude like farmers protest or the anti ca right okay this is my final question uh, you said uh, voluntary participation right so if yeah. in, a, in a hypothetical anarchist society i, I refuse uh, or i decline to participate mm. would i be allowed in that society like yeah so this is one uh, good question that you have asked so so i can answer it in a uh, different way so why would people do anything that's the fundamental question right like why should people do something so mostly there are three reasons for people to do something so one is that they they are forced to do it like you fear punishment like let it can be like the threat of uh, like god's uh, anger uh, it can be like threat of your boss throwing you out of job uh, that's coercion like there can be coercive ways to force someone to do something second is like you want to do it like okay let us say i want to eat eat uh, like uh, i i want to eat beef or i want to eat non veg i want to eat egg i want to eat vegetarian it's a personal choice which i want to do so uh, that is another way people do stuff so one is like coercion one is because i want to do it the third is because it's the right thing to do so the so why so when a group of people are living together uh, like in a community uh, it's a, it's a question of like if you do something what is the return that you are getting right like so uh, in a very let, let me put in a very concrete example so in an anarchist commune you are living in and uh, the community uh, has allocated like a farm in which the food for the entire community will be uh, like uh, grown and you have to spend like uh, one or two hours every week so everyone in the community has to spend two hours every week for looking after the farm so that like so it's a community farm and everyone get, and you 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 can choose not to participate but the thing is when you participate the reward you will be like fed your entire life from this farm for just spending like two hours uh, of your life in like per week so it's like you are giving community service you are giving some part of your time for community and you are getting a lot of it back compared to what is happening today like today we have to like live our uh, life entirely like from morning to night in a job that we hate under someone who is like forcing us to do and here you you are given the choice of another like small uh, amount of work which you have to do which you can deny to like there is no compulsion on it and you can do whichever of the community service work that you want in whichever way you prefer at whichever time so like then the question comes would you want to deny it so the nature of what work means or what you want actually is a completely different thing in an anarchy society uh, i think you got my point right of course uh, you yeah. can yeah you can deny it you can say okay i don't want to participate so then it depends on society like how will the society uh, react to that so in a society in which like very little effort is needed for like let us say for supplying the basic amenities for so food uh, water electricity let us take internet so these are like very fundamental things right now right if giving these things doesn't require uh, and medic medic medicine re require much effort from the community members i think the society can sustain without you putting in the word or can even if you deny that service the society can give you the needs for your survival but the stuff that uh, is for luxurious or like much more comfortable things if you need the society can say okay if if you want all those things maybe you would need, you need to spend some time in the community service 
so you get my point right like it depends on the society so and i again i am telling there is no one way in which an anarchist society can be organized it can be organized in multiple ways and uh, one fundamental thing of anarchy is like how anarchism uh, is formulated depends on the people themselves so uh, an anarchy society in india may not look exactly similar to some someone in let us say us or in the middle east or japan but one thing should be common in all societies which follow anarchism is that it has to be voluntary it has to have participatory democracy it has to be decentralized there has to be decentralization of power uh, okay with that we are ending this podcast uh, so pranav where can people find you yeah so people so i am active in facebook under my name and people can find me in instagram and uh, instagram and twitter in uh, cloudwalker13 that's my handle uh, i can share that with you okay thank you so with that we are ending the podcast yeah thank you thank you for having me